Hey everybody, this is Devin Townsend, and I'm here with Waves, and I'm gonna use this opportunity to discuss how I construct my dense mixes and how to create that sense of space that is typically known with my work as being a wall of sound style production. So what we're looking at here is a session for the vocal components of a song off of my last record, Transcendence. And because I don't have access to the 200 voice choir that I ultimately one day will, I've just found that having four of these tenors, my voice in this particular part representing a tenor, gives me the sense of size that I'm looking for. You see here I've got vocal one, vocal two, vocal three. Each one of these represents a harmony and each one of these four tracks is unison to each other and it creates the effect of a lot of width if I take these four tracks and then I pan them in a certain way. You'll see that two of them are at 100 and 100 left and right so it's a very broad stereo width and then the next two are a little more narrow so it covers the entire frequency range of that and I do that for each one of them and then I make an auxiliary for each of these that I then go through and do various um, micro type of adjustments to. Straight out of the gate, what I do is I throw the R de -er on all of this. What I do is I tend to just put the default of the R de -er on all these tracks because the default on it, although what the specifics of it are, I haven't investigated, is enough to catch the transients. When you get all these vocal tracks in tandem with each other, what tends to happen is frequencies and the transients end up um, building up. So if, for example, with my vocal, there's a certain frequency in my mid-range that uh, is inherent with me. It's like in the 3, 3.2, 3.5K. So if I have 400 of my vocals, that one particular period of energy within that track is going to build up and build up and build up. And it's the same thing with the transients. So the rds -er gives me the opportunity to sort of nip that in the bud straight out of the gate. So there's, there's the basic unequalized tracks. So how I would start to refine these is each one of the tracks I'll start with the V compressor. And again, I start with just what comes up as its default. There's no anything I do to it. And that's one of the, um, that's one of the beauties of working with these things for me is I'm not a fan of options. Because the stuff is so dense and because the way that I write is so rooted in being guided towards a vision in a certain way, I don't want to have to spend a lot of time with you know, the minutia of these plugins. So the fact that I can plug in the V comp and uh, straight out of the gate, it gives it a bit more girth, it gives it a bit more presence, is great. Then from there, I would throw an EQ on it. And we're gonna do a high pass to get rid of some of that information. And then that works well for that vocal. And again, how I end up mixing is I, uh, I make really broad strokes straight out of the gate. And then from there, it just ends up becoming refined over time. And then from there, I've got the basics for my vocal choirs. I've got two instances of the H delay set up uh, as a left and right, and then that is being sent to a stereo auxiliary. And basically, the effect of having a 300 millisecond and a 500 millisecond delay, it creates an offset ping pong effect that ultimately has a similar um, effect as a reverb, whereas it's a scattered, um, scattered uh, delays. But then I send both of those into a reverb, and the reverb's function is to soften the transients of that delay. So I will take the dev lay left and the dev lay right, which is what my, <laughs> what my name for this particular auxiliary is, and I'm gonna send that into a reverb. And we'll use a hall that's maybe about 
eight seconds, maybe a little less. Let's go for about six. And we're gonna bring that down. So the reverb doesn't become the fundamental sound that you hear. Its function is really to soften the transients of the actual delay. And then we'll send all three of these to our master effects bus. And we will call that Devlay Final. Okay, so that effect there is the foundation of how I record my vocals. And I'll take this one, H delay, the left side, 300 milliseconds, and let's increase that feedback a bit, about 80%. And then the right hand, the idea is to make the 500 end at approximately the same time as the 300, so I'd say maybe 60%. And then I have enough of a high pass filter that that low energy doesn't end up clouding the vocals already because a lot of what creates the space within these mixes is finding where the equalization is starting to build up and interfere with other things. And that vocal delay has to sort of slot in there between the vocals, the cymbals, and the keyboards. But that's the effect. So there's enough of a low end off of there. And you see, without the reverb, if we were to kill that, It's approximately the same thing, but you hear a lot of the transient. So I've just got the R verb in there just to sort of smooth it out, just a touch. And you see here as well, I take the low end and I, I, back, I back that up, you know, and then the, uh, the high frequencies as well. So it doesn't sound like you're throwing smarties against a wall. And that effect there is... I've done that for 25 years. Hallelujah. And even this, you hear, I'm like, you got this sort of Donald Duck sort of voice going on. My Donald Duck voice there, a lot of that. I find that within, if I have a vision for something, I use my voice to articulate those things in ways that when they're soloed sound really bizarre, right? So there's the basic idea of how I make my wall of sound vocal effect. And then when you, when this is finished, I'll take each one of these vocal tracks, I'll set the output of each one of the auxiliaries to the input of a recording track, and then I'll record them all at the same time. So if there's six vocals, I'll set up six new stereo tracks, plus a recording for the auxiliary. I'll record all six of those tracks, and then I bring those into individual files, and then from there, I'll get the relative levels, and then I'll export that again with the effects as a single stereo file. And then when I send it out to be mixed or when I go to mix it elsewhere, all this work that we've just done becomes a single stereo file, which sounds great if you're only working with several stereo files, but by the end of it, as you can see, even on the vocal, this vocal session alone, the amount of things like this, choir, dev choir, and evokes, another dev choir, another choir. These are all products of, of massive amounts of submixes that at the end, what we're seeing here is simply the vocals in this song Truth, right? But you'll see here's a submix that I did of the band. So everything there is a submix. You can hear like the hi-hat's the loudest thing in our drum mix currently, but the drums submixed, then the drums with the guitar, with the bass submixed, then with the keyboard submixed, then with the orchestra submixed. And then now I can add all these submixes into it and the combination. <laughs> Here's an, an echo. And that's the H delay on the lo-fi setting. But as opposed to going through 
and taking each element of a mix and sculpting it, sculpting it with EQ within that, I tend to just add and subtract um, multiple versions of the same sound. It's almost like a parallel echo, if there is such a thing. And then when it's all in, there's the high one and then the low one. So the wall of sound process, which I've been dubiously attached to as a title, and it's just as daunting as it seems, my best advice to anybody who's trying to achieve similar sort of senses of space is to work within the parameters of the submixes. And um, I can't do it without the Waves products. I've been working with them for as long as I can remember. and and. Uh, my level of OCD and my levels of need to really get into the minutia after roughing it in like I showed you is such that these plugins have um, really changed my ability to do these things from my laptop as opposed to from a lovely studio like this. Anyway, I'm Devin Townsend and thank you so much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.